This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geek, show number 393, recorded on March 7th, 2019. Here at Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets that find out your home. News, reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Collison, broadcasting live from the AverageGuy.tv studio here in a still cold, but Aaron and I were talking in pre-show, hoping, Aaron, Aaron, spring has to be coming, right? It has to be? Please, can't it be? It has to be coming. I think if you're anywhere north of, uh, in the United States right now, I think everybody is kind of done with cold weather. Yes, it's been yeah. nasty pretty much all over North America, I think. Yeah. Well, maybe yeah. with the exception of Mexico. But. Well, and Britain is getting like spring, almost summer-like conditions right now over in the UK. They're, in fact, they're, it's almost a little too dry. They've been suffering with some fires and some other things. So I think the cold air has moved just over the United States and Canada, and right. it's just sitting there. It's parks. Yeah. It really is. It, it, I don't it's think it's annoying. ever going to. I know. I know. Well, we're here. We're warm. It's great. We're here tonight. And of course, we're going to post the show. And tonight's show, Aaron has loaded a bunch of links into the show notes. So you're going to want to head out to theaverageguy.tv. And if you want the specific show, go slash HGG393. Uh, that will get you there. If you haven't yet downloaded the app, the mobile app, and I don't know why you wouldn't, easiest way to listen on the road. Streams really easy. Android and iPhone, it's absolutely free. Head to homegadgetgeeks.com. Get that on your phone. Just have it for an emer- have it for a home gadget geeks emergency, right? You're on the road. Oh my God, it's Thursday. You can literally stream that thing from anywhere. Homegadgetgeeks.com. And we want to thank our Patreon subscribers who kind of help me pay for that thing every single month. Well, you you heard her already. Aaron Lawrence is back. Aaron, welcome back to Home Gadget Geeks. Hi, Jim. Thanks for having me. Super great to have you. You're one of our favorite, and you always you always do well in the numbers. So thanks for coming back, and and I uh, appreciate that. We're gonna talk. We're gonna. I'm just gonna tease this. We don't want to talk about it now, but we have some great dental tech coming. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. I am just gonna a say personal it. Personal favorite of Jim, so I've brought it for tonight's show. It is, but that thing looks ominous, and uh, so you're you're gonna wanna uh, you're gonna wanna follow along with the links as we talk about this. All these Aaron writes these up, takes great pictures. And so as we get into all these, you're going to visit our site. Head out to uh, theaverageguy.tv slash HGG393. Aaron, we've done 393 of these. I think you're on eight or nine. I, at 10, I have to buy you a T-shirt, I think. that's <gasps> the. That would be awesome. Did you know that? Yeah. If you've been I guest, didn't know that. That would be fantastic. Have you been a guest for, for if you're uh, not like Uyghur? He's, oh, by the way, Uyghur's out skiing tonight. But um, <laughs> if you're like Uyghur, he doesn't, he doesn't get the T-shirt. But if I think on your 10th, we'll have to go back and count. You get um, you get a T-shirt. Well, let's That's awesome. Let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the tech you've been handling. I know you you said, and I think we've been talking for the last couple of weeks. Samsung made the announcement of the Galaxy X10. They got that new foldable one. I know you've got an S10 and or an S10 Plus and some stuff in your hands. You haven't reviewed it yet, but and you've only had it a day or two. But what are your initial impressions of this new Samsung gear? It's a gorgeous phone, and I think it should be because it's very expensive. But that's also par for the course these days with smartphones. You're you're pretty much guaranteed to spend a month's rent on what you're getting these days. Yeah. So mm. the S10, I got the S10 Plus, and I'll hold it up for you and for those who can see on the uh, on the YouTube channel. But sexy phone, really nice phone, huge screen to body ratio on it, and I mean the screen just goes from edge to edge. It's got the teeniest, tiniest, practically non-existent bezel on it. So it looks like a really, really cool phone. And I've just been playing with it just a little bit. I haven't sort of got full on into it, testing it out, that kind of stuff. Um, But one of the big changes is it's got a fingerprint scanner built right into the screen. So no longer do you have the button or a certain sort of place you've got to put your thumb to scan in. And I guess it has to be your thumb. How how are you finding that works? Because I am, I almost feel for that. I I have an iPhone eight plus and I almost feel for that. I know the, the, the 10 on the iPhone doesn't have that either, Yeah, but I almost feel for that. How is that experience working so far of getting the, getting the the fingerprint turned on? It's a bit hard to get used to, but I mean, so was my Apple iPhone 10. Mm -hmm. It's, it's like anything until you sort of get used to the gestures and, and the, the habit of it. Right. It's a bit weird. 
So I, I tried it kind of like five or 10 times in the first couple of times. I just couldn't get it to open up. And I'm like, what is wrong with this thing? This technology sucks. It doesn't work. <laughs> and then, you know, a couple more times I'm like, no, it's, it's operator error. Yeah. So it seems to work pretty well. And it's kind of convenient that, you know, it's, it's in a good spot. It seems easy. It's a bit more of a gesture with, I find with the iPhone 10, you can sort of just flick your thumb up the screen as you're holding it up. And it does both the facial recognition and the opening sort of all at the same time. Mm -hmm. With this, I find it's more of sort of a deliberate press. But, you know, again, that's probably mm -hmm. just something I'm going to get used to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you find um, from a uh, from a balance standpoint, from a usage standpoint, just on early, how different is it from, from your Apple? Um, oh. it's, it feels a lot thinner. Yeah. It's, does that one I feel mean, like want to fly out of your hands though? I mean, as well, the thin yes, light, I also don't have a case on okay. it. Okay. Okay. At least yeah. not yet. Yeah. No, it's just so, true. and I do on the iPhone and right. Right. you know, all the phones are made of glass now. So they're, they're slippery by design, right? I know. So you need that case. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and I say this as someone who I just recently smashed the case on my Google pixel three XL and I was crushed and it had a case on it, but I also kind of slid down the front of a mountain. So it wasn't really good. You were okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. It was just the way I had my phone in my hand and I was oh, taking man. some pictures Yeah. and it was just the way I landed, of course, cause it was in my hand. And then, you know, you put your hands down to support yourself and it went screen down. So uh, there, there was no saving it the way I came down. Well, it's an older phone. No. No, brand new. Uh, no, brand shoot. New. Well, did you have insurance on it? No. Oh. No, no, no. Yikes. But I was going to get the screen replaced so and then found out that it was like two or 300 bucks just yeah. for the screen. So yeah. I thought, you know, I'm just going to wait this one out right now. Let me, well, uh, before I, I got a question on that, but did you get additional, you get a watch with it and are you doing other, other stuff? Okay. And what is that? What do you have there? What are you showing? So us? I, with the phone, I've got the Samsung watch, which is the newest version of their watch. And it's a bit smaller, a bit thinner. Um, this one in particular, you know, they sent me the rose gold version. By the way, the if you're watching the audio, or if you're listening to the audio, she has both the Apple Watch <laughs> and the Samsung Watch on her wrist. I do. Do you do do you do that? Did you do it for the show or are you doing that? Okay. okay. No, I do that just because I I like to compare and connect and my But do you wear them that way during the day? I did actually. Okay. But funny enough, no one no one looks at me and goes, you're wearing two. And I mean, sometimes I also have a Fitbit on there or something else. <laughs> there have been days where I've actually been walking around with four devices on my wrist, but people know anymore. And they're just, they don't yeah. ask because they're That's like, oh, so she's funny. testing stuff out again. Great. That is so funny. I, I did. No, I did. Uh, I did a Fitbit on one side and a Garmin on the other. And I was doing that for a while. And seriously, there was one time I was talking to somebody and they were both buzzing. And I looked like this and they were like, seriously, do you, do you seriously have two watches on? You're like, yeah. Uh, yeah yes, I do. And they're like, do you do that all the time? And I go, yes, I do. And, yeah. Uh, this is, so, this is tech blogger life, right? No, this it's what you how do. How else are we going to test that? It's what you do. One of the things I've been really impressed with, with the Apple watch, I picked that up over the winter, um, is it's balance. And I never thought of a watch having balance. One of the things that, because I sleep with it, and that's super weird, but because I sleep with it, I've been having some sleeping problems. And so I've been trying to get to the bottom, like what's causing this? And, and maybe in a future podcast, I think I'm, I'm getting to the bottom of some of it, which is really interesting that you could, by tracking it, you could kind of get to the bottom of some of your sleeping problems. But um, I have found that it's very, very comfortable to wear. And I associate that with a well put together wrist, you know, a band and a, and a watch head that kind of separate or kind of I don't know. I, I can only call it balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just fits. It doesn't feel like, in fact, I check all the time to make sure it's still on my wrist, which means I'm not feeling it. How does that, and if you're wearing both on the same mm -hmm. wrist, maybe you don't do that, but how does a Samsung watch feel as you're wearing it? Have you gotten it, any indication of that? It feels pretty good. And they've, they seem to have redesigned both the case on the watch. It's the last one I tried was a lot bulkier and the buttons were kind of bigger. This one feels a lot more sleek and streamlined. Yeah. And they've also gone the route, and I don't want to say that similar to the Apple Watch because I, I don't know where they're getting their design ideas from. But it's got that silicone band that has sort of it tucks in under itself. Yes. So 
it, and it's it's amazing what a huge difference that makes because yeah. when you have the watch band that sort of overlaps and then you've got the little loop that it tucks under inevitably it pops open yep. so i love the watch band designs where they've got that little opening and you tuck the band flap underneath and it just stays put and it doesn't catch on anything doesn't bother anything so they've done that with this band that's come with it the band's also got this kind of nice little touch which is a little Again, I'll show you, but for our radio yeah, yeah. audience. Many watch the video too. Audience, yeah, yeah. Um, it's got just a bit of metal on it. So it's kind of jazzes it up a little bit, mm -hmm. makes it look a little, I think a little ritzier, a little sleeker. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's so far, it's a really nice watch. The screen is beautiful. Again, it's it's pretty big for R round size. face as opposed to square. Round face, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think I really like the round face. I mean, I'm I'm used to both now. But I do like the round face. I find it's more sort of a of a traditional watch face and a little more traditional feel where the square feels like that futuristic calculator watch that you remember from, you know, yeah. elementary school. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. you know, you take the pencil, it had the little keyboard on it. You take that's the pencil. right, tap mm -hmm. it in. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But no, comfortable watch. So okay. far, so good. Um, really good connections, good notifications just from the early testing. It's been buzzing me to get up and move when I've been sitting for too long that kind of stuff so i'll dig in more on what it does but so far really enjoying it and you're taking i'm assuming you're taking notifications from both phones at this yes. point right yes okay. exactly and that's got to be a little bit of an overload for you just all the different notifications coming in on both watches do you find that i mean the typical person's only going to have one watch but for us reviewers and us tech nerds is that a little bit over of an overload at some point you're like okay enough already a little, a little, yeah, we're peeking behind the curtain yeah. here a bit, but there, I think it was today I had four phones and two watches. So just testing out different things. And at one point they were all doing something. So my wrist is buzzing. Both of the watches are going off. I'm getting notifications on each of the phones. And I mean, some of them overlap, especially the Android phones. When you're logged in with your one account, they'll all go off at the same time. But I'm just like, what is going on? And it was somebody retweeting my tweet or something that I got notified all at once. But That's so great. Again, tech blogger problems. Oh, I know. The First average world. guy wouldn't have to worry For, about No, they, they do. We The average guy, at least that listens to this show, it's got about eight phones. Right. And uh, they're figuring them out. You know, let me ask you this question. This is not necessarily a tech question, but what you mentioned it earlier. Phone prices are ridiculous, right? Yes. Especially at the high end. Do you think we're in a in a bubble where the average consumer, I mean, we're still buying these things. Um, I put mine on payments to, you know, through through um, a Sprint. We're Sprint customers. And they, of course, they want to do everything they can to keep you on their network since they're number three. And so they make sweet deals to kind of make that affordable for you. The subsidies are fairly, are, fair, are gone for the most part at this point. But at least they make it convenient for you. Mm -hmm. But do you think, I mean, what well, you think the consumer at some point is going to go enough is enough and there won't be a space for, there's a bunch of these high-end phones that are a thousand to a twelve hundred, fifteen hundred bucks. That foldable phone, I think mm -hmm. from, from Samsung came yeah. in at, at two grand. Mm -hmm. Like, do, do you think it's a bubble? Is that a problem? I, I, I have two feelings about that. And one is that for something we use as much as our smartphones for everything from taking pictures to listening to music to making phone calls and sending messages and emails i i almost liken it to a haircut right a lot of people are like oh i only want to pay 10 bucks for a haircut what a rip if it's more than that and it's like well but your hair is the clothing or accessory or the thing you wear every day so if you're gonna cheap out on something cheap out on the t-shirt you put on don't cheap out on the haircut because you can't change that so i kind of think that way about phones and that's if you're going to cheap out on something the gadget that is so constantly in your hand you know for a lot of people every couple minutes they're doing something with their phone i think the price is almost justified in that way but at the same time much like any technology eventually you start, you know, you stop innovating the technology and you just work on start trying to start making it cheaper. So I think they'll probably come down a bit because I think we're already seeing people not adopting new phones as quickly. 
So whereas before everybody wanted the new phone every single year, I think a lot of people are making the decision to wait two or even three years. So I don't know. I don't know if that's a good answer to your question. No, it's a gr- but... it's a great answer. I think it's a great answer. I'm eight. I'm on an eight plus. I mm-hmm. couldn't right now. There's nothing enticing me to do anything different. I'm on my second year of it. I'll hold on to it for three or four as long as it survives. My my yeah. daughter won't take. She we we buy phones together and then. She won't even take an update because she's afraid Apple's gonna, you know, put the battery brick on her on her thing. So she, which is kind of interesting, all on its own. But um, yeah, no, I'm I'm kind of thinking like, okay, no, I think I, if I can get three or four years, maybe even five out of this thing, mm-hmm. uh, I think I'm gonna hold on to it. That for a company like Apple that has derived most of its revenue, and trust me, Apple could never sell another phone for the next hundred years and live off all the cash that right. they have, right? I mean, they don't have to do, they don't have to sell iPhones, but if you're just kind of looking at year over year, you have to kind of start thinking. I mean, they've, there's been some warnings, the stock price has taken a hit, there's been some supplier warnings and some of those kinds of things. Samsung's a little bit in, insulated from that because they have the TV market, they have their gadget market. And so that the phones get kind of uh, caught in the wash. There's also a million Chinese ripoffs of those phones as well that are out there and the Huawei phones and some some of those other phones that are out there. So I feel like it's not as big of a deal for Samsung. They can kind of take this and it'll kind of get absorbed into the rest of their gigantic empire. And I would love to know what is going on behind the scenes at Apple, mm -hmm. what other products they might be looking at innovating. I know there's a lot of speculation they're involved in. Are they going to start making TVs? Are they going to make cars? You know, what what are they going to do? And darned if I know, but, you know, I'm sure there's smarter minds than mine there yeah. going, okay, what's what's the next space we can innovate into and how can we diversify our business? Yeah. Well, it's certainly interesting. They're, they are interesting because they are a walled, I mean, they are really walled in a sense. They have not expanded. They got just boatloads of cash in, in a market where you're seeing um, Amazon begin to spread right? You're seeing, of course, uh, Tesla and what Elon Musk is doing. Are you space? Are you into the space stuff at all? I mean, it's space has never been cooler. Are you, I know. Are you watching it? I, you, you I really it? love it. And I was a lot more into it um, when I worked in TV news on a regular basis, but it's, I just find it so fascinating. And, you know, when they're landing the rocket back on the ship out at sea, and it's a perfect landing. It's just that stuff just blows my mind. It's I love it. Super, it's super great. You know, uh, you weren't, and I was barely around for this, the late 60s when we were going to the moon. And, you know, you don't see, I, I watched some of those, uh, you know, those uh, launches and what went, around, what went on around them. And then you watch a SpaceX launch and it's a rock concert. Like yes. people are cheering and the, the, the newscasters are hip and cool and like, this the days of space being stale and kind of for nerds. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they're still place. super nerdy. I mean, the fact that we can land this thing on a ship that's floating, that's moving, get a perfect landing on it, and then reuse that thing. Yeah. You know, twelve it's weeks just later. I, no, I, it's, I wish I had you know a tenth the smarts to be able to do something like yeah. that, or to be even part of a team that can do something like that. Yeah. But yeah, it's super I love cool. to watch. There's some, there's some really great technology coming uh, with some of the space stuff, and uh, and it's pretty cool. I just want to watch it. I didn't watch anything in real time with, uh, you know, they launched the, uh, what did they launch? The, uh, the the one going to the space station, and they had, uh, you I know. They're, the they're, Falcon, is it? Yeah, I forget the name. I should know what it's named, but I can never remember these things when Somebody I'm actually podcasting. But uh, to go to the space station, it's going to be manned. And it was just the way the things they do. And then I watched Elon and he's, he, he's not always a nice guy, but I watched him in the, uh, in the press conference and it's just to see his brain churning as they ask him these questions. And, you know, you see that engineering mind kind of go, well, I don't know, we could try it. We haven't thought of that. We go, I think about, you know, and it's just, it's amazing to kind of think of some of the things they're doing and, and kind of really making space cool. So good stuff. I agree. Um, you've been, uh, last week we had, or two weeks ago, we had Dwayne Robinson on the show. He's making a move to Amazon, which was kind of amazing. He had been a Lowe's Iris customer and had kind of gone in on the Lowe's environment. And of course, Lowe's, uh, uh, Iris has, they've, they've, that's another, in pre-show, we were talking about Chatwing. 
dying Lowe's just said here in the United States, hey, Iris, home automation, done. If you want to refund, put things in, you can have it. We're going to give you a bunch of money back. Um, but you've been testing out uh, the Amazon Echo Show. I didn't see that one, but I did see your review on the sub. Mm -hmm. to that as well. So tell me a little bit about what you're doing with, with the, uh, with the echo devices, uh, and, in Amazon. I've had uh, a really great opportunity actually to try out a bunch of new stuff from Amazon. So I fiddled around with some of their tablets, the fire, uh, HD eight and the fire HD 10. And then I, I guess it was last year. I tried out the echo and the echo plus and the echo dot and the echo spot actually. Uh, so the new thing, well, it's, I, it's probably newer for Canada than it is for the American market, which is why it's new to me, but, um, the echo show, which is a smart speaker with a screen. Um, I think it's about a 10 inch screen or so color HD, nice looking screen. And then on the backside of it, really sort of big, fat, powerful speaker. So it's the smart speaker concept where you can talk to We'll call her A word because sometimes I yeah. hear that if Lady you A. Her name, I, 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 Lady A. That's good. Lady A. We, we set use. them off all over, yes. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. all over podcast land. So yeah. and and mine here too, no doubt. So, um, but yeah, so you get to call in Lady A for assistance on whatever you need, whether that's weather or setting timers or asking trivia questions or, you know, any number of smart home tasks. You can connect to your smart home lighting and other gadgets, but. A lot of people were asking me when I was testing this out, like, okay, so I got the speaker. Why do I need the speaker with a screen? If I want the speaker with a screen, I have my phone. So that was one of the key questions I wanted to try to answer is, why bother with the screen? And the answer, smart play for Amazon, is that you can watch your Amazon Prime TV right on the screen. And, you know, I've got mine in the kitchen, and that's where I did the bulk of my testing. So, you know, you're whipping up chicken for dinner. Your hands are all salmonella Whatever. <laughs> Let's hope not. Let's hope not. <laughs> Dirty is fine. <laughs> sure. Um, so, you know, you don't want to be touching a lot of things around the kitchen and whatnot. So it's pretty easy to ask Alex. Oops. Alexa, That's okay. Sorry. Lady A. Lady, Lady A. a. To yep. dial up, you know, Bosch on Prime TV. And right. you can watch an episode while you're working away making dinner. Um It'll, it'll do other things. You can do video calling with it. You can do um, chats between devices in your home, for example. That, that's called drop-in. So, you know, if the, the kids are upstairs and, you know, you don't want to go upstairs and talk to them, you can drop in on them and have a quick Sarah, chat. Sarah does that to me. The kitchen is literally right above me. And I hear, <laughs> ding, dong. You know, it makes that little drop-in yep. sound. Yep. Lights turn green. Hey, dinner's ready. Come on up, you know. Yep. You could yell it. I can yes. hear you, but it's yeah. it's just funny how that works. Yeah. yeah. They're great at that. So there's there's good reasons to have the speaker. You can also get some additional data. You know, you can see the weather forecast. On the Echo device, you can ask for a flash news briefing and customize it. So with the Echo Show, the flash news briefing comes with video and a news anchor. So it's more like a traditional newscast, which you know, is, is kind of nice depending on what you're doing yeah. for some people. You want just that quick audio experience. That's fine. If you're in your car, you obviously don't want to be watching TV, but you know, when you're home and, and you've got a little more time to focus, having the visual elements of that newscast are kind of nice as well. Do you, have you messed much with the Google infrastructure and in, at all in your testing? Have you been working with those? Yes. I think the Last Google Home device I tried was the Google Home Max, which is, again, the bigger, yeah. um, more powerful, higher quality smart home speaker. But yes. Any, do you have a preference as you look at the two side by side? You know, they, they're beginning to separate, right? And, yes. and gain, they're the two winners, right? For yes. sure. In what we're doing here. Yeah. Um, any preferences on either one? Yes. So about... Must have been about a year ago. I actually did a sort of head to head comparison because that was another question that I got asked constantly is I want to buy one of these. Which one do I get? So I put them through a bunch of tests and the, um, the comparison is on the YouTube channel, which is Aaron Lawrence TV and on techgadgetscanada.com if you do want to check it out. 
But the test that I put them through and just after having both of them in my home for so long, spoiler alert, the clear winner for me is Amazon. It's Alexa. Wow. It really is. And wow. it's okay. it was just so much more responsive and able to do more and easier to interface with, easier to use. Now, there have been probably numerous software updates to each one or firmware updates since I've done that. So it's probably actually worth me doing another update and testing them out. But the last time I did look at that, Amazon for me was the clear winner. And that's the one I've been recommending to people to pick mm. up. Yeah. But with that said, I, I mean, Google does, if you, if you have an Android phone and that's your ecosystem, go with Google. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you're the second. So Dwayne kind of came to the same conclusion. He didn't want to be in the, in the Google space at all. And so there were some, there's, I think there's some other reasons behind that, but, um, he, he kind of landed on Amazon. I've heard, I heard back from listeners who are in the Google space and they just love their Google, the Google home and the way it works and its integration. I think they have made leaps and bounds in home automation and some of the services areas. And, and I think you're right. If you have an Android phone, it makes total sense to mm -hmm. just be in that space. Uh, iPhone, uh, Sarah has an Android, but she's not a, she just wants the thing to work, you know, and we are so, I, I've been thinking about bringing in the Google device just to try, but like everything else, she's so hooked on lists and, mm -hmm. and, you know, doing all those things in that ecosystem to rip it away from her now would be, would probably not be very fair. So I think we're going to stay Amazon as well, at least for now. Mm -hmm. They're both kind of side by side as far as, uh, uh, you know, home automation and, services associated with it and smart things that it does not the not the group smart things but the smart things that it mm -hmm. does so no interesting to hear that from you i i, yeah. I uh, that um it surprises me a little bit i actually thought you would be more on the google side than you would be on the amazon side but okay no that, that that's it, okay it makes so much sense and when whenever people do want a recommendation for you know whether it's a smart home speaker or a watch is another good example, or even truly wireless earbuds. It's like, well, which ones should I get? And the first thing I always ask is, what's your smartphone? Yeah. Because there's a huge case to be made for matching your smartphone to the other technology that works best with it, because you do get a much more seamless experience. So, I mean, as, as a primary Apple user, but somebody who uses pretty much everything as well, you know, I, I do have the Apple Watch. I don't have the Apple HomePod. Um, I found that it didn't, I mean, it sounds fantastic and it looks gorgeous, of course. But, you know, Siri is not as good of a digital assistant as either of the other two. Yeah. So, I mean, it depends what you want, which gadget you're looking at and what you want it to do. But, you know, with something like a smart speaker, I always say just match it to your phone's platform if you can. And I think it was both Google and Amazon do play nice with iPhone. So if the HomePod isn't something that you've got the budget for, good to know that you can still have most of the same effects using one of the other platforms. Mm -hmm. Joe, Joe in the chat room says he has a car that has Android auto integration. That may also be if you have auto integration and then a phone. Mm -hmm. That's an Android phone. Okay, well then maybe Google Home is the is the right way to go. Maybe those integrations. Definitely. I think from a home automation standpoint of them talking to the Nest devices or them the them talking to your thermostats or your lights or your sensors or your door sensors or any of those things that we have, um, I think they're all pretty much on equal footing mm -hmm. for the most part. I agree. Um, there, there is some, there's still some integrations, some interesting for, for my regular listeners. If you're not, if you're into this home automation space and you're not listening to home on, uh, Richard Gunther and, and some of the work that he's doing there, um, really diving deep into the technical aspects of this. Uh, there's some, you know, there's Aaron, there's a lot of talk around hubs. We've mm -hmm. kind of filled our house with hubs, yes. you know, and, and the average guy, so to speak, like how many hubs do I need? And if one thing goes wrong, then I got to go reset all the hubs to make it yes. work and some of those pieces. So I think we still have a long ways to go in this space, by the way. I think this home automation stuff is still pretty jankety. 
Definitely. And pretty, um, yeah, it's just not great still. I mean, it's okay, but for it works for us, but the average consumer is still kind of like, oh, uh, I don't, you know, I don't know. Right. You showed those lights last time you were on there. We talked about these lights that you could stick on your wall yes. and do something. That's Never. not average guy stuff, right? You know? No, yeah. no. it should be. I, I know. It's cool. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's cool for sure. Well, um, the sub, um, do you think, okay, the, you know, the problem with these speakers is they're, they're all high end stuff. Mm -hmm. Did the sub help? It seemed like I watched most of the video, but I couldn't feel it. Of course you did. You did the Jurassic park. You got to see, if you haven't watched the video, the link to it will be in the show notes. You want to go see it. You do the Jurassic park on top of it. Right. And you, and you, and that was really cool, by the way, that was, that was super cool. Did, but from a, actual human ear standpoint did it make a difference it made a huge difference and i mean i was using it with the echo plus which i think is it's a pretty pretty good speaker for the size and and the power that it's meant to have but the sub adds a, a whole new dimension of sound to it and it is really noticeable it it feels like it spreads the sound out more around the room and yeah i was struggling with sort of how do i you know it's it's like a it's you can't even really show how it works sound wise because it's a, it's not like the speaker that that's the music mm -hmm. coming out of it. It's kind of that low end vibration. So you don't get the same visual of it. So I was like, well, man, what can I do? Like, how can I even show people how powerful this is? And got the brainwave to do the old Jurassic Park, like you said. And, super good. Yeah. And, it was and super good. I was like, it was, yes. it was actually good because it also showed me how much it was really vibrating and reverberating and yeah. how much it was working because there is that moment where you're like well is it really adding and is it really helping that much and you know doing that kind of helped me realize that yeah it really was and i i did notice a big difference i i do recommend it i quite enjoyed the experience with it so you know it's not inexpensive i think it's about 129 us and I think the so like Echo five hundred dollars in Canada, right? <laughs> <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> so it's a bit of an investment. Yeah. Could and one of the things I looked at is you know are there better speakers that will give you more of a balanced sound, including your low end, for you know three, four, five hundred dollars? Yes, probably, but you know. Yeah, we're they're, we're they're not a lot a, more expensive. We're not a household that has music playing a lot in our house, and and, and I don't know if you you are, but w from your use of it, you know, it's not like we're pairing this with our TV, or it would make mm -hmm. sense to have a sub. This is really adding to the music experience, right? Yes. Or right. So if you were, where would you put it, or 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 for you, and for it to work for you, where where do you think you'd place it? I had it on the floor and I think that is the recommended placement. That's what sort of room, but in what room though? Where living room. So kind room. of okay. main floor, living room, dining room, open area. And it, it did a pretty good job of filling the room. So I think it, it's, it's pretty big. It's not a small device. So it's probably like 10 inch, eight or 10 inches, I think around and tall. So you, you know, it's not really the kind of thing you're going to put on a shelf or sit yeah. on a, a No, you wouldn't want table. to. Yeah. You wouldn't want to, right? That, that those subs need to go up underneath something mm -hmm. on the floor, hidden in a corner. I mean, that's the beauty of having a sub is you can kind of put it anywhere you can hide it yes. in the room as long as it's on the floor. In most cases, right? You want that on the floor kind of radiating. It is funny. We have a sound bar that has a Bluetooth sub uh, uh, with it in the in the living room. And I sometimes it's forget it's even there. You just, it kind of disappears, right? I have it hidden back behind a couch. And until that thing loses power or something happens and it's not on, and then you're, you know, you're watching TV, you're like, this doesn't sound right. Right. You know, what and happened? then, yeah, what happened? And you're like, you realize the sub has gotten turned off. I, um, I don't think like, I don't, that's just not having a sub for Alexa. We, we use it mostly for voice. When we do have music on, it's kind of background ki kitchen cooking music, right? Something mm -hmm. we're a big fan, by the way, of uh, the John Williams channel on Pandora, I think, where you get all John Williams, you know, all of the Star Wars and Empire Strikes Back and, and Raiders of the Lost Ark. That's a great thing to cook a dinner to, by the way, if you haven't done that. Coming out of the tube uh, is fine. 
Like, you know, you're like, okay, right. this is good enough in the kitchen. So, but I imagine maybe in a living room setting a little bit better. Sure. But the other, the other thing is if you're so concerned about your audio quality and you're really trying to fine tune that audio quality to get, you know, the best low end, yeah. is your primary speaker really going to be an echo device or a Google device for that matter? Or, yeah. you know, that's kind of what I mean when I say, are there better whole audio solutions that give you more of that bigger balanced sound? Or are we just sort of trying to put trying to fix a problem that that people don't have and not a cheap way of fixing a problem right. either right yeah in that well it'll be interesting to see um a joe in the chat room says try the hans zimmer channel that would be another good one uh to do uh to to play pretty well i am um i'm thinking that we're gonna i'm gonna pick up the show and replace we have the original um uh, echo device that I want to take to, and she's going to talk here because I use the, I use that command word down here. Uh -huh. uh, and I think we're going to move it to the, that'll go to the bedroom and kind of become, because I, I didn't uh, find anything called bedroom that can play music <laughs> to play on your speaker. Use the device Hello. name or set up multi-room music in the Alexa app. There you go. Hold on. We'll just, we'll just shut her off for now. <laughs> um, but uh, move that because there are times when I'm getting ready in the morning, I just love to shout at that and and it's nice i don't want to set up speakers in the bedroom you know and and i don't need all the smart capabilities in there well, i just really want some music when i'm getting dressed uh on and off and then i think that the show is that we've looked at it dave mccabe who's a podcast over on reset he he's got one too and i think that's that's a pretty great i mean that that's pretty much the premier kitchen device right at this point i think so we've talked a lot about touchscreen computers because we're all pc guys and so we for the longest time you know get get yourself a touchscreen computer and do all those things mm -hmm. i think the show really does everything you want it to do can you pull up recipes will it find things for you can it display all those things you would normally want in the kitchen yep so there's web browsers it's got uh, both firefox and amazon's proprietary browser which is called silk and you can choose which one you want to be the default so you can surf the web. Um, the other thing it'll do, I guess all recipes has a bit of a channel. I don't know, a, a service, a skill, I think is probably yeah, what's best called. The right word. Um, yeah. It's not available here in Canada. So I haven't been able to try it out, but I understand a lot of people stateside have been using it for, you know, watching cooking videos while they're in the kitchen and then trying things out and following along. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's a great use for that technology. You can also watch YouTube videos on it. Yeah. So, you know, whatever, whatever your content of choice is, you know, if it's, if it's online, if it's on the web or on Amazon prime TV or on YouTube, you can, you can ask for it and you'll get mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Do you, um, have you gotten into the home where they ship food to you? Have we had this conversation? I've been pimping hello fresh on the show at the end of the show for, ah. And for no reason, just that it's changed my life. Like we cook, we cook together now way more than we ever have. And that's just, a, it's been an awesome thing for my marriage. But have you gotten into the box where they, they, they send you food and you try those out? Have you done any of those? I haven't, but I think that's only because I'm, I already cook, I would say 90% okay. of meals at home and, and what I don't eat at home, I'm still cooking home and bringing with me. So I kind of am in that habit and that routine of of the fresh food and making my own stuff. But I'm super fascinated by how that is working for people and how it's changing things for them. Because mm -hmm. if you're not inclined to that meal prep and fresh ingredients and you know, you think it takes two hours to make a meal, this is a great way to show people that healthy is also easy yeah. and tasty is also easy and healthy. Yeah. Well, you, you'd, you'd ask me in the pre-show, you're like, Hey, your face looks a little thinner. Mm -hmm. It's portion control through HelloFresh. Like you, they, they give you exactly what you need and you don't overeat. And, and, you know, typically we were making these big gigantic meals. And then when the kids were gone, we're like, well, look at all this food. And I can just, I will just continue to eat. And one of the nice things is it makes exactly what you need, right? And then you're done. And there's, there, there isn't any, for the most part, there's not any leftovers. Mm. It's such a low tech solution. That's the funny thing about it, right? The highest tech thing there is, is ordering the, the, the mm. meals, you know, on the website. And then you, you, we were talking about, you know, showing recipes like on a, on a show. 
its recipe comes on a card and you know oh, you, put, you put the analog. Yeah. You, yeah, you would you would actually think I actually never thought about that. I guess I could log into the app or go on a tablet and pull up that recipe. They make it available for me. I guess I could do that. But it's been so easy just to grab the recipe card. Right. And we just put it on the, you know, we put it on the stove. We have a little holder for it. We put it on the stove and make the meals. Super low tech, but Very um, yeah, no, it, they, they've been super good. We've been, in fact, we've been buying more kitchen gadgets just because of mm. that. And we did, we kind of partnered with uh, a friend of mine who does Pampered Chef. And we just picked up some new, like Sarah loved it, some new things to do, you know, to do spices with, some new oh, yeah. cutters. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All kinds of great stuff, right? I mean, uh, it's, if you're a cook, are you, do you, um, are, have you picked up any new kitchen gadgets of your own in the last three or four or five months that you've been, you've been particularly proud. You're like, yes, so glad I grabbed this. Uh, I know I it's not in the show notes. We're totally off script. We but, are totally off script. But I thought I'd ask you on that. Kitchen gadgets. Oh my and, gosh. I think we talked about the meter thermometer. Yes, that's the yeah. digital wireless thermometer. Yeah. No, Did we talk great. ever about the Thermomix, which it, is sort of a robot all in one kitchen gadget? No, I don't think we did. So, the Thermomix is this device, which is wildly popular in Europe and Australia, New Zealand. And what it essentially looks like is a giant cross between a blender and a food processor. And what sort of makes this device unique is that you can use it to chop food. You can use it to mix food. You can use it to stir. Um, you can use it to steam. So like a rice cooker, a veggie steamer. It heats, so it's not just um, a chopping device. It also will cook your food. And the really key thing is that it comes with these recipe chips. It's also, I think, Wi-Fi enabled so that you can just get them from the cloud. But you dial up the recipe. Say you want to make, you know, risotto. All you have to do is gather the ingredients. You hit start on this device. And it'll tell you, okay, measure this much in. Oh, by the way, it's also got a scale built in. So you pour in the rice and it weighs it out for you and goes, okay, stop now. Add this much water. Next, add these particular spices. And then you just leave it. So you let it cook. And then, you know, 20 minutes later, you have perfectly cooked risotto. Wow. And then when you're done, you take the risotto out, you serve it, you pack up the leftovers, whatever you're doing put soap and hot water in it, put it back on the base, turn it on, and it cleans itself. So it's like this all-in-one, crazy, amazing kitchen robot that pretty much does everything. You have blo you're changing my world, right? I have never heard of this device, and you are changing my world. Thermomix, T-H-E-R-M-O-M-I-X, right? right? Just like yes. it sounds. Yes. I'm looking at one. They're like 1500 bucks. They sure now, are. Okay, but wait a minute. We just talked about fifteen hundred dollar phones, right. right? So let's just keep this keep this in perspective. Like <laughs> you think of a kitchen gadget, um, and, and they've got it looks like they've got kind of a whole system around. They'll yes. they'll put a zero percent APR thing in your in your house to get that done. So you have one of these. I have then? one. Yes. And how yeah. have you, how long have you had it? I have probably had it for I would say almost two years, and. I, I had never heard of it either. And I was visiting my aunt in California and she's like, oh, you like technology. You've got to check this thing out. And she made this salad and all she did is she starts, you know, throwing like half a pepper, you know, two quarters of an apple, you know, a whole bunch of broccoli florets and a half an onion. And I'm like, well, what it, you're, it looks like you're putting that in a blender. Like, how are you about to make salad with this? And then she starts putting all the ingredients for the dressing in too. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> and she's like, watch, it's magic. And she literally turns the dial because it's preset for a certain amount of chopping time. Six seconds, it shuts off, says, okay, we're done. And you open it up and the salad is perfectly chopped and perfectly dressed. And I was just like, what? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I was like, okay, well, what, el what else can it do? So the next day we made risotto. And same thing, like you put in a, a, a block, like a big piece of Parmesan cheese, and it will grate the cheese up into this really fine grape. Then you take that out, and then you start with the rice. And it just walks you through everything step by step. And I was like, this seems crazy. Like, yeah. it seems like it shouldn't work and that you wouldn't use it. 
And so I got my hands on one to try and tested it out and reviewed it and just fell in love with it. It's, it's super versatile. It's, it replaces, like I said, you know, a rice steamer, a veggie steamer, um, your food processor, your blender, make smoothies. You can grind coffee beans so you can get rid of your coffee grinder. Wow. You can crush ice. Like if you have a kitchen gadget that does something in your kitchen right now, this device can probably replace it. Well, it won't brew coffee though. That does no, not replace the coffee. coffee maker. Okay. Just the grinder. That would be impressive. Yes, it would. <laughs> grind <laughs> it, brew it, Kick dispense it, out. it. Yeah. And, and then clean itself. That would obviously, be obviously, yes. How, how long does it take? Do you have to have any special detergents or nope. how long does it take? Regular to clean dish itself? soap. Okay. You turn it on for like five or 10 seconds and wow. it just sort of spins itself clean and then you rinse it out. And it's so ma maintenance it's pretty easy. I know it's like on some of these gadgets, you know, like I love the Pampered Chef chopper. You know, it's got a piece that goes around it and you put onions or whatever and kong, 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 right. I love it. Every part except where the chopper goes into the plastic stuff collects in there, right? And right. I know it yes. comes out, and you can kind of wash it out and whatever. But um, uh, it the the I have a milk frother that is the easiest thing on the planet. You know, you pour it up, you pour milk in. It's a Viva a V A V V I V I V A V A well something like that. Mm -hmm. Pour milk in, put the the lid right. on it. It's got a magnetic spinner, mm -hmm. right? Hit the button. There are no choices froths the milk in i don't know 10 minutes depends how how cold the milk is to be honest right because right? it's got to heat it up right it's monitoring the temperature it brings it up to the perfect temperature it shuts off and then to clean it literally just swirl mm -hmm. it i you know put my hand in there a little bit a little soap yeah. boom you're done i love those kinds of things are you saying this is it's as easy as that to clean something like this it's absolutely i mm. that was the part that that kind of blew my mind is like, well, you know, it's great to have these gadgets, but I find what the reason people stop using the gadgets is because they're hard to clean or they're tedious or, you know, there's all this unpackaging and unboxing and this setup and whatever. This one, it's literally a tiny squirt of soap, you know, half a, yeah. half a container or the bowl, they call it, of hot water, lid on six seconds and it's clean. Wow. Yeah, it's uh, different it's a attachments. Pretty, amazing device. Different yes. attachments. Then I assume on the inside, the attachments to do lettuce are different than the ones to grind up other things or whatever, right? You have a the bunch of the blade unit is the same. Okay. Um, it's just what speed and hmm. I guess speed and direction maybe that it goes in. So, but it's got like a steamer basket that goes inside so that you can do rice and vegetables. It's got a it's kind of like a big tray attachment that sits on top and the tray attachment sits over the lid. And what it lets it do is, so you could cook rice in the main bowl and the tray is two tiered. So then you can put vegetables in the lower tier and then, uh, you know, meat in the top tier. I'd probably have it backwards, but yeah. Um, so you can layer it and then you just stick the lid on. And again, it walks you through the steps. So you start the rice, then you add the meat, then you add the vegetables and then everything is finished at the same time. So, wow. and again, all in one device, everything is done. I've made spaghetti and meatballs in there before. Um, we've made sticky toffee puddings in there. It, it will literally cook almost any food you can think of. And it's all automatic. It's all the recipes are automated. And you, and of course you can use it for, whatever you want at random right. you can set your own time your own temperature your own speed and function and stuff mm. so it's super versatile you have blown my mind we this wasn't even in this in no. the show notes where i'm gonna have to add this in this god this sounds amazing what's the down i mean wh what have you not liked about it well the price is okay out of besides reach price of remember yeah we're buying right. cell phones <laughs> Twelve hundred dollars <laughs> cell phones. It's the haircut of your kitchen. Yes. <laughs> um. Gosh, Jim, I don't know. Like, I always try to at least find you know one con yeah. in a gadget, and th there's not a lot of. I, I had a real struggle trying to find any downsides about this one. It's it's easy to use. Um, you know, it's simple. It's got a touch screen on it. It it automates everything and walks you through there's it's just got so many pluses to it i you know again yeah. aside from price which we're not counting 
I can't think of a downside off the right. top of my head. Well, interesting. That I'll have to, there's, if you go to thermomix.com, you can schedule a virtual demo. And uh, I think I'm going to go, I think I'm going to get that to maybe after the show, I'll get that scheduled. Ooh, they might have some in my area. I'll have to. They do I'll kind of to... like an Avon, or at least they have been an Avon model or um, what do they call Amway? One of those. Yeah. Tupperware yeah. Parties. They have, they have distributors. Uh, yeah. I, I imagine that are doing this. Yeah. yeah. But I think last time I sort of looked around on it, I know they were looking into doing more of a direct purchase model, mm -hmm. but part of the, I think part of the charm and the allure of this device is I, maybe you just need a really good TV infomercial for it, but you've got to see all the amazing things that it could do. It's pretty just big. Just looking at it online, it's it pretty. Is big. It's pretty yeah. big. Yeah, you you look at the picture when you first go to the website, and you kind of imagine this thing maybe the size of a, of a of a coffee grinder. Yes. You know, no, no, no. It's it's pretty good size. Maybe uh, maybe one of those big mixers. What's the brand name on those mixers? KitchenAid. KitchenAid. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Probably the size of a KitchenAid. You think? Yes, I would say it's probably wider than a KitchenAid. Yeah, yeah, it that's actually pretty pretty close. Yeah. So yeah. it does take up a lot of space on the counter, yeah. but at the same time if it allows you to put away, you know, the blender, the food processor, the coffee grinder, the rice cooker and a bunch of other things, it sounds pretty good. Well, I we went, you know, I had a espresso maker, grinder, you know, and we went to Nespresso and mm -hmm. I mean, one kind of one machine to rule them all, pop a pot in. It's been fantastic. So yeah. reads the barcode, spins the thing. They, if you want to meet some coffee snobs, holy cow. My wife called Nespresso to get some help on something. And they gave her, they spent about a half hour on the phone with her, giving all this great information about coffee and how they wow. do things. Yeah. I was like, must have been a slow day. <laughs> uh, but, um, that has been, and we, I liked it so much. We bought an espresso for work that, uh, a couple, a couple friends of mine went in on and then everybody just buys the pods. And so when work coffee is really bad, which it, it tends yes, to be I don't universally. Know. Yeah. 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 Uh, you can, you can brew your own. So uh, pretty cool. Well, that's a bonus. That is bonus. I will there have to, I will leave some links in the show notes. Oh man, uh, one somebody in the chat who was it said it's uh, or oh Ryan said in the chat, yeah, it's spelled because I said I was spelling it out. He said it's spelled Drobo for the longest <laughs> time in our community. Drobo meant expensive, like if you were gonna do oh, anything, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, it's a Drobo because those things were not for the longest time were not cheap. Right. Um. Hey, since I teased this at the beginning of the show, let's talk. Let's talk a little about dental tech. This is the only place, by the way. Only show in the world you can get dental tech. I'm sure there's no podcasts that are covering this. So you are get it right here. Podcasting? I don't know if they are. I don't think they, because they're not as cool as we are. And right. who, hey, you can only talk about this stuff about twice a year. And then people are like, okay, how fancy can you get with toothbrushes? You had had this uh, device last time you were on or a couple times ago. You had had this device that kind of looked like, um, I don't know how to describe it. It looks like. There you go. Uh, say something so it flip the camera flips over. Oh me? Yeah. There All right. Go. So not not to cut you off, Jim. No, but yeah, do it, this, show this this device. I guess you would say looks like a giant green mouth guard mixed with a toothbrush or a sea urchin. I don't I don't know quite what you'd say. So <laughs> you say a sea urchin. <laughs> That's what some, my sister called it before. She's yeah. like, "Why are you brushing your teeth with a sea urchin?" And I was like, "Oh, okay. I see what you're. I see what you're getting at." So this is the, we're talking about the Blizzident, and what Blizzident is is essentially a 3D printed toothbrush, which is U shaped, shaped like a mouth guard, and what it's got is bristles all on the inside of the device, configured to your exact teeth. So what they will do is they'll, well, you take a 3D scan of your mouth and you can get these done at most dental or orthodontist places now. Costs anywhere from like 50 to 100 bucks. You send your scan into Blizzident and what they do is custom make the brush to your mouth, to your tooth configuration. So what you get is this device that looks like a very strange mouth guard and you'll pop it in your mouth. You basically rub it around sort of five or six times and because it's cleaning all your teeth all at the same time, 
your teeth are brushed in six seconds. So with a regular toothbrush and my husband's brought me some props here. That's so with great. a regular toothbrush, Jim, so great. as you'll note, you're only cleaning one or two teeth at a time. So it takes you, you know, dentists recommend that you're brushing for two minutes. With the Blizzident, though, because you're brushing all your teeth at once, you get them all done in five or six seconds. So I had previously reviewed this device and it was, it was pretty neat. And I really, I found the experience really cool, but the device was big and kind of unwieldy and hard to put in your mouth. And it really stretched your face out. So I used it for the testing period and I really didn't continue to use it. So they have streamlined the, I guess the framing of it, the mouth guard portion of it. And they've also added a lot more bristles to it. So they've really done a, a big redesign. They've also cut the price on it significantly. And I can't remember now what it is. It used to be like three or 400 bucks to get one of these made. And I think it's down, don't quote me on this because I didn't look this one up, but it's around 200 bucks now, I think. Well, it's not too bad. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're super into your dental tech gym, I mean, this is, it's custom made for you. So it's getting into every nook and cranny and crevice. It's cleaning all your back teeth. Um, you know, I've got one rogue wisdom tooth mm -hmm. and, you know, the, the brush is built for that. So it's cleaning that for me. Whereas, you know, a regular brush is a little harder to reach it maybe. So that's the Blizzident device. I got it. There's a great picture of you, by the way, in <laughs> in the post, which I put in the chat room. Hopefully, they'll be able to see that we we've been. It's been questionable whether our links are actually yeah. making it into the chat room. Or at least my links are making it into it. A uh, great picture of is that? Are you okay? So review period is over. Are you still using it on, on uh, a regular basis? No, but I'm also testing two other toothbrushes okay. right now. So okay. Only, only because I can only brush my teeth so many times in a day. <laughs> well, you know, you could do one in the morning and then after lunch and yes, then one at night and then, true. you know, kind of, kind of rotate through the pieces. Um, I am, I'm terrible. This is, I just don't like, I push too hard. I, I want to, I'm, you know, I'm actually, I feel like, and then I'm not consistent where I do that. And I go to see the dentist and he's like, dude, what are you doing? Like, you know, and I, I kind of think those may be a solution to pushing, you know, brushing too hard. It's, it's hard on my gums. I would imagine those are pretty gentle. Yeah. And so it's in, you know, six seconds. That's called aggressive brushing because I do yeah. exactly the same thing. And my dentist yeah. was like, back the hell off. And I'm like, well, I, I like to do a good thorough job. I know. And the dentist is like, no, you're ruining your teeth. Yes. But the thing about the Blizzident in particular is because the bristles stop at your gum line, because they can use that 3D scan to configure the bristles exactly, it's not affecting your gums. So, and again, because the bristles are positioned strategically and they fit exactly around your teeth, you're not getting that repetitive wear motion from brushing back and forth, back and forth or up and down, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, whatever repetitive motion we've all fallen into. Yeah. So yeah. you get a lot less wear, you get a lot less pressure and you get a lot less gum damage yeah. is, is at least the theory and the thinking. And I would agree with that behind this brush. So, okay. How, how easy is it to clean? Uh, it just runs under hot water when you're done. Okay. So the, the other thing about this toothbrush is you don't sort of put the toothbrush on the brush. You need to put it on your finger, sort of rub it around your teeth a bit um, with a little bit of water and then put the brush in and then brush it, you know, and then spit it out. And then I just rinse it out under hot water and it's, it's pretty good. They just, recommend you replace them once a year. And okay. Just throw it in the thermal mix and, and get <laughs> <laughs> steamer basket a, give it a good that would probably why, work actually why, it probably would yeah. probably would um i may give that i mean I, I every time i go to the dentist he's like in fact so much so they're giving me techniques to use so like okay we want you to use this ultra soft brush yes with a in only two fingers that's all you can do you can't like we don't want you gripping on this thing and like leaning into it we want you know and so this this I'll have to talk to him about that one next time I go see the dentist and say, what can you, could you do the, mm -hmm. he's got all that fancy imaging. Could you do that? They may even have a relationship where they, they can do the imaging and buy this for you, I would imagine. Right. And, yeah, or, or 
I haven't, I, haven't, uh, I haven't paid attention if they do like well, subcontracting with dentists, but that yeah. would be a good thing for the dentist too, wholesaler, right? Yeah. Well, my dentist is super progressive. He's trying new. Every time I go in there, he's got something new. And I'm um, like, Alan, like back off on the technology, you know, seats <laughs> that give you massages. He's got TVs up on the ceilings. He's got all these, you know, the X, all the new x-ray machines. He's just kind of got everything. You're, you're loving this though. Oh, it's pretty great. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty great. Don't don't uh, don't get me wrong. <laughs> uh, it's pretty great. Hey, let's wrap up with one thing. And this is kind of interesting. You throw in the show notes, this global address system that uses three words. It kind of reminded me as we've gotten into cryptocurrency over the last couple of years, many of the wallet uh, kind of um, uh, passwords, we'll call them right. They're these keywords. They they're made up of these succession of words, like, you know, and they're regular words, they're English words, words you would use. There might be 15 in a row. It's really hard. It's a hard thing to crack. Um, and so it kind of reminded me as I saw this, but this, this addressing system that these guys have done around the world that uses three words to get anybody's address. Talk a little bit about it. Yeah. So it's called what three words. And I, I heard a bit of a talk about this and I was like, Okay, well, what is it? It's it's a new global address system. So we all have, you know, a street number, a street name, a city, a postal code, a country. And so I was like, well, why why would I need a new address? I have an address. It works just fine. It's not necessarily for you and me. It's for the rest of the world. It's for the developing world. It's for rural properties. It's for trying to locate something in the middle of the ocean. So what, what three words does is they've assigned a three word code to every, I believe it's a three by three meter square. Mm -hmm. So they've mapped out the entire globe, divided it into three by three grid, and then each single three by three square has a three word code, a name. So you can go to what three words.com, I think it is. Yep. It's maps. Yeah, and it's, what, it's what the number three words.com. Yes. Yeah. yes. You can go plug in your current address or just, you know, look around for something and it will tell you what your address is. Now, the unique thing about this is for my house, for example, I might have a dozen different addresses for the house. And again, you would think, well, why would you need that? Let's say you've had a heart attack in the backyard by your back fence. And, you know, you're trying to direct an EMS crew to your location. It's easier, you know, you could say, well, if you come in the gate and then come to the back and then, you know, go around the tree and we'll be, you know, we're behind the whatever, behind the planter. If you can give them the exact three by three meter square where you are, you know, I'm at coconut.full.exposed, then they know exactly where you are. So if you think about how this translates to the rural world, you know, a lot of rural addresses are really difficult to find. And, you you know, it's like go past the third tree, turn left at the broken light, and, you know, then that's where the house will be. Again, if you can just give that three-word code, you'll get directed exactly to that person's front door. If you're lost in the woods, there's no addresses for being lost in the woods. I'm like 12 meters off the such and such trail, but I walked, you know, two kilometers up the trail before I went off the trail. Like, how do you tell someone where you are? I mean, assuming that you called for help and you have a cell signal, but, right. you know, you can direct people to exactly where you are. So this is huge for the developing world where traditional addressing systems don't actually exist. Huge for rural properties. Um, there's, I guess there's, you know, there's plenty of cities that developed addresses over time and the addresses aren't sequential or they don't make sense. So you've got, you know, three beside 12 and number two is across the road and it doesn't make any sense. So with a system like what three words, you can always find your way to exactly where you need to be. So I just thought it was a fascinating yeah. system. And, you know, you, you think about it, you're like, well, I, I don't need another new address. But at the same time, if you want Amazon to deliver your package to the back door so that the parcel thieves out front aren't stealing your stuff, 
you can direct them to exactly where you want it dropped by using that what three words code mm -hmm. in theory. Now, Amazon yeah. is not using what three words. So, but you, you get the idea. Do you know how new this, how new this is? I, uh, I don't, I want to say, I mean, I don't think a ton of companies and places are using it yet. So I want to say, I want to say it's just a couple of years old, if sure. that, but I don't yeah. actually know. Three by three square um, would get you front versus back door. Yes. Um, other Jim in the chat says, how does it handle height or depth? In other words, skyscraper going up. How do they handle that? Great question. And I asked the same question. Yeah. So it doesn't is the short answer. But their logic on that is even with our traditional address system, you still have to provide a floor number and a unit number. So with what three words, it'll, you know, you can direct someone to the door, front door or back door, you'd still need to tell them come up to the fourth floor, it's unit 302. So th with that said, they are looking at, you know, do we also need to go now into 3D with it? Do we need to consider height? So it is something they're looking at. It's not something it does right now. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of the chess game on Star Trek where they had to you know, three-dimensional yes. uh, problems. Mm -hmm. And um, they, it's some interesting um, things they they say on their website um, for places like Havana or Cuba or Rio de Janeiro where addresses don't even really exist, yes. particularly in the slums, right? With what three words, even the underprivileged or, uh, or impoverished could at least have an address. Families feel, fleeing war or pr uh, pr uh, persecution could find each other at remote refugee camps more easily. Not yes. to mention there's so much of the world, including forests, mountain, national parks, oceans that aren't tied to any kind of physical address, but we still might need to locate someone. That three by three meter square, you would kind of think is pretty big. It's actually not very big. Like, you know, literally I could say. You can almost there's... stretch out your arms and I think that's about as big yeah. as. Yeah, close no. to the biggest three meters is. Mm -hmm. And I could even say my front door, or I want you to put it on the the crook of my at my house. The sidewalk comes up and then turns left, and I could you could pin yes. it down to that left turn Absolutely. and say this is this is where I want it to go. Do you know? Uh, of course, the addresses I get are English words, which yes. are easy for me. In other countries, are they translated? It uses uh, the words of each country's language. Okay. So what three words in English would be different than what three words in Chinese, for example. And I'm, I can't quite remember how many languages they're operating in right now, but their logic is because so many words don't have direct translations or, you know, there's one word for snow in English and, you know, nine in, in Northern climes. Right. So what they've done is basically made the decision to we'll take whatever language we're going to work in and everybody gets their own what three words code. But, and I, I haven't tried sharing across languages to see how, you know, exclusive settled mm -hmm. escaped, how I would share that with a friend in China so they could find me. I'm not quite sure how the translation portion of it works, but in each language it's unique. Yeah. No, super, super interesting chat room. Any other, any other um, exceptions that you could, you'd kind of think of when you're thinking of that. If you want to know where I grew up, you would go to friday.monkey.star. <laughs> so that, that's actually pretty easy to remember, right? Friday.monkey.star is that's that's the house i grew up in in san Jose. i figured i could give that address out on the, it's it's out in california i'm not there anymore yeah. um, no i think a lot of people find words easier to remember and especially with mnemonics yeah. those are easier to remember than you know 124 4th street at least for me i i have a real hard time remembering numbers when they're all jumbled together like that that's just how my brain works so for me you know, remembering the words of an address would probably stick in my head a little more than the numbers would. Yeah. And, and even so that friday.monkey.star was in the house. And then I moved the cursor or I moved the square mm -hmm. over to the front door and that became people.select.moment, yes. which you'd kind of think boy, and that, that was nine meters from from one to the other place and you'd think maybe one of those same words would be in there but no 
No, they no. and they do that deliberately. That similar words are deliberately spread across the globe to avoid exactly that confusion. Because if it was like Friday dot monkey dot team, I was like, well, you know, is it Friday dot monkey dot team or was it Friday dot monkey dot you know street? Yeah. So they they've kept the wording well spread out so that it will never it 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 doesn't have the potential to confuse right and if you ever used the gps system of uh, 63 dot and then some 17 digit number after that and then right. by by 172 dot you know and that gets you that exact spot on the grid but it's on it's it's not you can't remember it mm -hmm. i am aaron i'm amazed three words does it yes like there's enough and, and there, there's, there's enough words yeah. and enough combinations that yeah. there are no repeats. Yeah. No what do you so what do you think the chances of this thing kind of catching on and, and people starting to use it? It's a fairly new service, but what, what do you think? I, I think it has huge potential. I know uh, companies like Mercedes are already using it. The United Nations is using it in some of the developing nations. The Red Cross is also using it. And it's uh, it's apparently the postal standard now for countries like Tonga, um, Solomon Islands, Mongolia, Djibouti, I think, cool. and, a, and a couple more. So, yeah. I mean, it's that says a lot that it's already being adopted that well. I know other country or other um, companies rather are also looking at it according to what three words. So, yeah. well, think about drones flying packages to you. Yes. And, um, yeah, you drone know. would have a hard time navigating back door. Like it could right. navigate potentially to the address, but how does it interface enough to know right. where the front door is compared to the back door? Well, even Uber would uh, would benefit from, you know, hey, I'm going to walk out. I remember one time I called an Uber in a building and then I walked out to the street thinking, well, they'll just pick me up on the street. Nope, the guy, guy went to the building. And, right. um, and it would be, it would be pretty nice. Do you know if any of this is integrated in with any of our current, uh, GPS with our phone? Can we, can we find that? I imagine we just have to pull their app up and it would find Yeah. Us. So you can, you can download their app and it'll work on your phone. Okay. Um, in terms of, does it integrate with Google yet? No, but you, you could see that coming. Yeah. And I'm on their site, map.what3words.com. If you want to go to the map, actually, their satellite images are beautiful. Mm. Um, now, this I'm in California, so that kind of makes sense. It's a beautiful place, uh, but it it is um, um, very very cool. To uh, that's a great idea. I I'm I'm not completely sold on three words just because of the word thing. It, it is simple. There is some um, there is some science around our memory and that we can remember threes better than mm -hmm. anything else. So if you get four or five, it gets more difficult to, to remember, but three is kind of that optimum. If you're going to, if you're going to have multiples for whatever reason, we remember things in triplets. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sure they're playing off on that. You know, what a simple sort of, I'm, I'm using air quotes. What a simple <laughs> solution to a pretty complicated problem. Hard to believe no one's thought of it to this point. You know? And isn't that the most amazing thing? Because yeah. you, you hear the early concept of this idea and it's like, oh, well, it's a new addressing system. And everybody kind of rolls their eyes and goes, why? And then once you hear the why and the logic for it and how it can be used. And I mean, there's probably any number of things I haven't even thought of yet, you know, but it seems so smart to me. And, you know, the squares never change. So it's constantly fixed. So unlike, you know, street addresses where you might knock down a house and put up a duplex and now you need, you know, number two and number two A, the, the three by three meter squares never change and the names will never change. The words tied to them will never change because that was the other thing that I was wondering is, you know, if I'm Apple, can I make the front door of Apple headquarters, you know, apple.siri.jobs? And the answer is no. You know, can, can you buy your three word square? No, you cannot. And they they address that right up front. It's on their website. And that's because they want to maintain the fixed nature of this, that it will never change. Because you can imagine if we all started changing the three word squares, we're back to the original addressing system again. So the fixed nature of this is what 
makes it universal and makes it work. And the, just to reiterate, the language is it kind of based on the language you're in. So in other words, they map the whole world in English. They map the whole world in Spanish. They map the whole world in Japanese. They write, if, if you think about all the languages. So if you're in the ocean and you're Japanese, your, your three words are going to be Japanese words. Are yeah. they using, you know, this is going to be super odd, but are they using kanji uh, characters for, for some of the, like, I think some of the Asian, Chinese, Japanese, Korean that uses, that uses the that characters? I do not know. No, yeah, I don't no. know. I only checked no. it out in English and then just wanted to know if, yeah, if it was a translation from English to something else and yeah, no, so. no, super cool. This is, you know, um, uh, Joe had said, you know, a, a drone could use lat long. Yeah. In fact, uh, there's, you know, GPS and those numbers, machines don't care. They don't have to remember because they know, right. It's in their memory. I think the value of this is a person being able to say, Hey, I'm, this is the location I want you to deliver to it. It's at this square. And it's a really easy way for them to kind of define that and remember it. Um, and if it's going to be a regular address, be able to share that easily, you know, people dot select dot moment. That's the front door of where I grew up. Mm -hmm. That would be a fairly easy thing to remember to share uh, with people to say, Oh yeah, people dot select dot moment. Right. And to teach kids, you know, if we're teaching yeah. kids their addresses, is that easier for them to remember? Maybe. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Aaron, you never, we always get something cool out of you while you're here. Actually, the whole, the whole show is cool. Thanks for, thanks for coming on. Um, if folks want to head out and see all the great stuff she's doing, Aaron, L Y Y C dot com uh, is the site. What's uh, Aaron, what's coming up for you? What, what kind of, what are some things that you're looking at? What's in the future? What's exciting when we think about gadgets and, or anything else? I am reviewing an automatic garage door system that you can Ooh. hook up to your old school garage door to automate it with your phone or with Siri or Amazon Lady A. Um, what else have I got? I've got a speaker that clips onto the back of your smartphone to give you a bit more sound amplification. I'm trying that out. I have, I've got a whole stack of things camera I'm trying out. Uh, I've got some Philips outdoor light strips that I'm going to try out as soon as it goes above minus 25. <laughs> I have lights, by the way, I bought Christmas lights to put on the deck, non-tech. I just, it, I, I need something this summer when we sell the house, I kind of need some lights out there and I want some lights out there. I, <laughs> I bought them. I have not been able to even go outside yeah. since I bought them. So, yep. yeah. No, and that's, I, I haven't set up the garage review yet. I'm supposed to do that for Best Buy and I've had it for probably two, three weeks. And it's just like, I can't, your hands freeze in seconds. So I can't oh, even I go out and try and get no. this thing kept it's, connected. It's no, so. it's no fun. We need some winter, uh, we need some winter gadgets uh, that kind of help keep us warm and jackets. Heaters. And, man, I know, I know. There's been some really cool gear. Um, the, the, this is for another show, but there's some really interesting clothing tech that's coming with different fabrics and different things and, and different things sewn into them. And so I think the future, it'll be interesting to see what we wear um, here in the future as well. Hey, what's the difference between, so your site, Aaron, L Y Y C.com. And then your, um, your tech gadgets, Canada.com site. What's the difference between those two? Yes. So when I first started blogging, I was really only doing stuff locally. So I went with Aaron L Y Y C.com. And when I started sort of doing more and broader topics and more sort of products nationally, uh, I added the domain for techgadgetscanada.com. And in all honesty, I should really and would like to retire the Aaron LYYC, which is sort of the main domain. Tech Gadgets Canada redirects to that. But again, because I am my own webmaster, I don't know how to do that without just killing my SEO. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I've... Uh, I, I just pretend that it's all the same uh, and nobody okay. notices. Yeah. No, it's just, it's just good to know. You can find her either one of those. You have a new Twitter handle as well that we should promote? I have two. Yeah, I have two. So I have at Aaron LYYC, which is my technology-based mm -hmm. Twitter handle. And uh, I have another one that I used to use uh, quite frequently when I worked in the TV biz, which is TV Chick 1313. So I use them both now for uh, a lot of the technology stuff that I'm doing and just sort of interesting projects that I have on the go. 
So follow me at either one or both of those. And I'd be happy to interact with you there. I think the easiest way to follow you is on YouTube. So yes. do you have a do you have a vanity URL for your YouTube channel? What, what's YouTube.com slash Aaron Lawrence TV. And please, okay. if you're gonna go subscribe, as I like to say on my channel, it helps me keep making more videos that everyone out there can watch it and enjoy. Yeah, smash okay. that bell so you get notified. Everybody says that. Smash that bell. Yes. Um, that's I follow you there. That is the easiest way um, to kind of keep up with the YouTube folks that I follow. That is especially on the phone, the and or the uh, YouTube app is really good at keeping current. And so I've gotten into a habit where I'm on the treadmill. Okay, I'm going to go through my subscriptions and start. I I bought some um some wireless earbuds that they're ripoffs from they're not the they're not the Apple ones, but they they work just as good. They're just not quite as expensive. And um I go on the treadmill and I watch you or I watch the videos that I do and it's a great time to recapture some mm -hmm. of that time. Um, I've stopped running and I've started walking, which means my workouts take twice as long, right? It's just, it's, Sweet. it's one of those things. So I need to be doing more. I spend half of it working. So I'll check email, clear some things, whatever. And then when I run out of those things to do, I'll throw on YouTube videos. And oftentimes when yours pop out, I'm like, Oh, new video from Aaron. This is cool. Put it on, put it there. Um, I watched the, uh, the, the echo, the, the, uh, sub, mm -hmm. um, just the other day I watched that on the treadmill. So, um, super great, super great way to keep up with you. And so thanks for putting those videos out. Um, well, thank well. you. Thank you to, to you and the rest of the audience that checks them out. So yeah, no, thanks for coming on. Can you hang tight for just one second? Let me let me close this really quick. We'll remind everyone to take advantage of our Patreon link that's out there. If you want to support the show here in any way, always appreciate that. Whatever you can give is great. We have one in five dollar plans on Patreon. Go to theaverageguy.tv slash Patreon if you want to get that done. Helps pay for the mobile app and some other stuff for what you do. We started a new Discord. Are you doing Discord at all, Aaron? Are you in a no. Discord group? Um, at what all. is it? So, I don't well, even know what it is. Think of I it can like, tell you what, what three words is, but I got nothing on Discord. Really? <laughs> So Discord is really just kind of a community, kind of a chat room, kind of a, uh, um, it kind of harks back to kind of the old days of when we would just get together and it's it's text. You can, you can put graphics and stuff in there, but it's a, it's just kind of an independent away from Facebook and Twitter. And it's kind of its own thing. We have a Discord group. Great way to do it. The, the crypto, all the crypto folks are out on Discord. Right. It's fairly independent, right? The makers of Discord were like, We'll never sell your data. No one's watching you. Like, this is independent. We're not going to put ads in here. So it's kind of, a re it was kind of, I think, a response to the Facebook right. stuff. Oh, I'll have to look it up. I'll check yeah. it out. You taught Discord. me something tonight. Thank you. If we go, cool. If you go out to theaverageguy.tv slash Discord, you'll find our group uh, out there. Super easy to get into. And I think if you have trouble with the link, just let me know and uh, I'll, I'll get that to you. You can, if you do have trouble with the link, uh, sometimes it expires for some reason. I can't particularly figure that out. Um, email me, jim at theaverageguy.tv. If you have any questions or any comments or you want us to talk about something or you want to say great things about Aaron, well, you know how to get a hold of Aaron. You should say some great things about her. She willingly gives up a bunch of time to be able to do this with us. And so you, if you appreciate it, send her a note so that she comes back because it's important. That, and you got to get your t-shirt too at some point. That's you know, right. you got to earn that yes. t-shirt. I do. Uh, so email me, Jim at the average guy dot TV. Don't forget the average guy dot TV platform, uh, both media and web hosting powered by our friends over at Maple Grove partners, get secure, reliable, high speed hosting from people that you know, and you trust. You might want to look into maybe changing services, Aaron, Maple Grove partners. You get, you get some help with the if service. Help me with that redirect and yeah. not to lose all my. No. Uh, yeah. Right yeah, on. There could be cr Christian who runs that is a, is a big deal here on the network. And maybe one of the smartest kids I know, smartest 25 year olds. Is he 25 now? He's a pretty old, I mean, he's a pretty young guy. Uh, check that out. Maple Grove partners uh, at maplegrovepartners.com. Let's see, anything that we talked about, HelloFresh. We are live every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern, out here at theaverageguy.tv slash live. And uh, we thank you guys for coming out. We'll do just a short post show. No crypto tonight, and no so no crypto in the feed for this week. With that, we'll say goodnight, everybody.